Well, hi ho, folks, and welcome back to the Adventures of Turwinkle, the Gnome Mage. Well, hi, Turwinkle. Hi there. Are you all set for tonight, sir? Indubitably. Well, great, because tonight we are going to go back and revisit a guild we've talked to in the past. That's right, we're going to go and talk with the Conclave, a fun guild that we have always enjoyed spending time with. And so for you new folks, we're going to give you the rundown on what they're all about. And for you folks that know all about them, we're going to kind of give you an update of what has changed with the Conclave. And so without further ado, let us go and find them. Alrighty, folks. Well, we have hurt ourselves to the Shadow Moon Valley here in uh, Dalaran, and we are at the Toluna Observatory, and we have been looking all over, and oh, I think we found them. Here they are, folks. That's right, the Conclave. Now, the last time that we introduced, introduced these folks to you, or interviewed them, actually, was way back in July 29th of 2013, and, well, right up front, here we have Chryson of the Conclave. She's a level 100 human warlock. Hello, Chryson. Hello, Terwinkle. How are you, ma'am? I am very well. How are you? Oh, I am excellent. So tonight, ma'am, we are going to find out all about your guild for those new folks that are new to roleplay and new to Wormrest Accord and, and maybe new to the game. And we are also going to give those folks who already know about the Conclave an updated story as to between now and when we last interviewed you. So let us go ahead and start with this front row here. And I guess I'll come over here and let's get over here. All righty, ma'am. So who do we have here first? Well, first, I want to introduce Stannis Delenta. He is one of our officers. <laughs> he is also one of our plot officers. Uh, he is also Aisili Crescent's right hand. Uh, he handles everything, including her protection. Oh, okay. Awesome. And next? Next is Miss Monet. She is our recruitment officer. Uh, I see Lee. She plays Crescent's quote-unquote secretary. Uh, again, she handles everything and stands on Crescent's left. Almost always. Okay. And next? Uh, this is Kwai Maison. She is one of our spellbreakers and also one of our up-and-coming officers. Uh, she usually stands on Crescent's right in all battles, and she is, uh, again, I'm sure just an administrative role. Oh, alrighty. And last in this front line, but not least. This is Volker. Volker is part of our uh, main plot core group, and he is icily new to the Conclave, coming in as one of our newer seers, uh, and he is a very gifted one at that. Okay, excellent. All right, folks, there is the front line and the officers of the guild, and so when we come back, we are going to meet the next line, so we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back, and so the next line. So who do we have here, Grayson? This is Gonic. He is one of our wonderful dwarves, who is apparently in tears. Uh, he is new to the Conclave as well, and he has actually come and gone from our ranks since we went through the Dark Portal, and he's back, and we're excited to have him. Oh, okay, welcome back, sir. And next... This is Alexander Van Roth. He is our paladin and confessor. He is working on becoming a cleric. Okay, well, he certainly seems to be a little brighter than everybody here, ma'am. Yes, he does stand out a bit here in the ranks of the Conclave. Well, what a way to go, sir. <laughs> All righty, and next. This is... Grace, or also known as Graciella, she is one of our ancillaries. Uh, she is a combat uh, specialist and a rogue. She handles protection for the guild as well. Okay, it says she's the commando jack. What, what is that a rank? No, that is a uh, that is a fun title she picked up. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. And next. This is Dr. Brian Wilson. He is actually one of our newer recruits. He is a relic hunter, and uh, he's a very interesting person to get to know. 
and uh, I look forward to seeing what he does within our ranks. Okay, and what, what happened to his face? Uh, he does have an injury. Oh, okay. Wow. Everyone's got to come RP and find out. Right, right. Okay, and next? This is the lovely Miss Amelia Stormheart. She is uh, nicknamed the Acrobatic Knight. She has uh, been with us for a few months now. Um, she is slowly rising within the ranks and been given more responsibility. And uh, she's taking it all with grace. All right, excellent. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> who, next? This is Riley Crawford. He is, uh, serves under Crescen as one of our warlocks. He is uh, a demonologist and a botanist. Um, he has been around for over a month now, and uh, he definitely uh, has a presence. Well, sir, again, don't worry about what Blizzard has done to warlocks. You continue. And what's great about roleplay, I know, sir, what's great about roleplay is you can still roleplay him just as powerful as he was before. So that's what makes us role players better than the PVEers. So. <laughs> And I love, I love his outfit, man. All righty, next. Well, you know who this is. Ah. This is Miss Serene. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The love of <laughs> Terwinkle's life. <laughs> That's right, folks. If you want to get a fun look at Serene, way back when I did a, a wonderful interview with her, and she is just as good now as she was then. Yep, she definitely, she ideally serves as one of Crescent's warlocks as well, um, as which is part of what makes Conclave special, is that we do allow warlocks. <laughs> Alrighty, and next? Uh, next, this is Zubrin, the bearded bulwark. He is one of our other dwarves in the guild. Um, we have a Iron Forge contingent that does work beside us. Uh, he definitely knows how to take command and definitely knows how to hold a line. All right, excellent. All right, folks. Well, that is the next line. And when we come back, we will get the next line. So wonderful, wonderful so far. All righty, folks. And we are back with the back row. And so, ma'am, who do we have first? This is Ediel Grayson. He has been a longstanding member of the Conclave. He is a specialist, and much like Zubrin, he is a frontline fighter. Awesome. All right. And next? This is Averia Frightpaw. She has been with us a long time as well. She is our uh, Druid of the Wild. Oh, I love, I, I love this transmog. She is indeed very beautiful. Alrighty, and next? This is uh, Lady Lara Barra. She is a new member of the Conclave, and much like Iveria, is also our, one of our healers. Ah, okay. And next? This is Amrith the Mighty. She is an initiate <laughs> of the Conclave. Alright, excellent. <laughs> She, uh, she's pretty brutal with a mace and um, has a nickname of the Breaker of Shoulders. Unfortunately, um, it is uh, happened internally, not so much as to the enemy. Oh, no. What, what, what happened, ma'am? Um, poor Amrith got possessed at one point and decided to uh, ring the bell of one of our paladins. Uh, which one? Lucin, who is unfortunately not with us this evening. <gasps> Did she kill him? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. And next. This is Hayrock. Uh, he is a recruit and part of our raid team as well. Um, I see Lee. He is one of our stealthy folk. Oh, okay. And next. This is Andisiel, also known as the creator of crowns of no matter what we've killed. Uh, <laughs> she is she's a very tough druid and not someone you ever really want to cross. That staff is amazing. I haven't seen that staff before. I love it. Where did you get the staff? 
Honestly, I do not remember. Um, <laughs> I think it was from an LFR. Wow, I, I love that thing. That's awesome. All right. And last, ma'am, but not least. This is Tom Fortier. He is one of our uh, combat rogues and fighters. He uh, also handles a lot of stealth issues for us. Um, he just slobbered on me, ma'am. They do that. It's okay. Have you hugged your organ today? <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I just did. Okay. Well, awesome. So, folks, when we come back, we are going to find out all about the guild that all these folks are in, the Conclave. And so we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, Chrysan, we are talking about the Conclave. Now, it used to be the Conclave of Azora, and you've changed it to just the Conclave now. Why the change? Well, we spent several years at the Tower of Azora as guests, always welcoming those who wish to also explore knowledge of magic. But we had a update to our plot, and much like all things in the game, the world changes around you. So instead of saying stagnant and remaining in that format, the Conclave went through a very large plot change where we had a lot of political strife between us and the Kirin Tor that was then coming back into the Alliance. Once that plot was resolved, we no longer lived in the Tower of Azora, and so we just decided to become the Conclave, which meant that no matter where we went, we were just this. Okay, and so what does that mean for you, Guild, the Conclave? What, what does that title mean? The Conclave is a collection of those that serve in a magical capacity, usually. But the, con the actual The Conclave, the Guild, is a collection of people that strive to fulfill the Guild mission, which is that of artifact hunting and cultist elimination. We have changed our format from a more educational background to a more proactive and dark heroic sort. Oh, ah, okay. And so, with that said, what kind of Guild is it? Are you guys a heavy roleplay, medium, light? Do you guys PvE, PvP, raid? What kind of Guild is it? We are a heavy RP guild. We also do have a raid team. We dabble in PvP, PvE, and I believe that with the 6.2 launch, there is talk of a challenge mode team forming. Oh, wow. Okay. And so a little bit of everything for everyone. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, folks. So when we come back, we're going to find out a little bit of the background history to the Conclave and get some storyline behind the guild. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And so, Chrysan, what is the backstory behind the guild? What's the history? The Conclave was founded about four weeks after the bombing of Theramore. It was created uh, in the hopes that dangerous magical artifacts would never fall into the Horde's hands again. We are indeed an anti-Horde guild. Not necessarily PvP or murderous, but it is all trying to get ahead of the Horde to make sure that Theramore never happens again. And so with that, folks, when we come back, we're going to find out how you can join this guild in its quest to keep those magical artifacts out of the Horde's hands. So we'll find out how you can get in to the Conclave. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And Chrysan, now Monet usually handles all the recruitment. Is that not correct? That is correct. But unfortunately, folks, she does not have a mic, so she has typed all the information that we need to know about how to get into the Conclave. And so, Chrysan, Turwinkle's new, and he wants to join the guild. So first and foremost, who do I talk to to get into the Conclave? Well, first, usually we receive whispers uh, while in game, and while doing so, we usually direct them. Any any member of the Conclave can either direct you to the officer on that is online or direct you to our website. Um, from there, yeah, from basically everyone's gone through it. All of our people are extremely approachable. Everyone's really nice, and everyone's very well informed on how to get in. So it's never an issue. So if an officer isn't online, one of our members will be able to walk you through it. Alrighty, and what's the address of your website, ma'am? It is conclave.shivter.com. All right, there you go, folks, conclave.shivter.com. And it has all the information that we're going to talk about tonight, doesn't it? It does. Oh, excellent. All right, so next, is there an age requirement? 
there is actually indeed the age requirement. We are an 18 plus guild. And that is not necessarily due to the content of the RP we provide. It is also to the fact that our members are actually very mature individuals and wish to play with other members of, of certain ages. And they do not wish to be um, in the same vicinity as minors. And it's just a personal choice we made many years ago as uh, officers. Okay, and that's totally okay. And is there a class restriction? The only class restriction we have is Unholy Death Knights, as any magic is allowed in the Conclave except for necromancy. Ah, okay. And now obviously you do not allow pandas in the guild, so there is a race restriction, isn't there? No, no, no. We allow pandas in the guild. That's <laughs> just everyone teasing me a little bit. I, 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 I'm not a big fan of pandas, but I, they're... The RPers are great, so I don't mind them. Okay. Do you have any pandas in the guild, ma'am? Um, do <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe we have any active roleplay pandas at this time. All right. So all you panda roleplayers that would love to be in the Conclave, I want you to come and join the guild so they have some panda representation here in the Conclave. All right. Next, ma'am. Is there a level requirement to getting into the guild? There is not a level requirement, but we are very, very clear in our application that we do actually go out into the world. We don't just sit around in certain zones. So there may be times where we're in a level 40 zone, a level 100 zone, a level 85 zone. So we try, we try our best to be able to bring people into role play that is safe and zoned in for them but we do expect our members to eventually do level all righty now when you're interviewing folks for your guild is it an ic or is it an ooc interview the application itself is a mix of ooc and ic to give us a feeling for the person's personality uh their character and background to make sure that they adhere to our rp policies since we are a lore abiding guild there is an ic interview that does follow which happens in game once our entire officer corps reviews your application okay and they fill that application out on the website yes yes sir all right excellent and lastly do i have to know how to role play to be part of the guild not necessarily. We have brought in people that decided to make an RP character in under three days. We have a dedicated lore team. We have amazing members. Everyone's willing to step up and help either craft a character, help shape RP, give people ideas. Um, you don't have to know how to RP to be a part of the Conclave. We will do our best to help you. All right. Well, excellent, ma'am. And, you know, I, I do also see a lack of gnomes here, ma'am. Um, I have a gnome. I do have a gnome. Actually, <laughs> I actually have two, and they're both amazing people. And it's very early in this evening, so unfortunately, you most of your viewers are only witnessing half of our guild right now. So I'm hoping in the next few minutes you're about to get a tidal wave of people coming on. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know, ma'am. And so, folks, when we come back, we'll find out the rules that Turwinkle has to adhere to now that he's part of the Conclave. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks. Well, while we are away, we had a few people show up. Who do we have here, ma'am? This is Halberk. He is one of our paladins. Uh, he is one of our frontline fighters and a knight in the truest sense. Okay. And next... This is Sir Elanius Shafa. He is also one of our officers and plot leads. Um, he is a Knight of the Silver Hand and serves as our military leader for the Conclave. Oh, all right. Excellent. And next. This is Edson Vanier. He is one of our battle mages. Uh, he has been with us for some time now, and he is very knowledgeable in the arcane arts. Oh, awesome. Mage fist bump, sir. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and hop back in line there, guys. All right. We'll get situated here. Here we go. And so, Volker, we are talking about the rules now that I'm part of the Conclave. And so what are the in-character rules that I have to follow now that I'm part of the guild? 
Um, the first and most important, probably, in character rule is that you have to respect everyone that's in the Conclave. We have everyone from paladins and humans to dwarves and warlocks. You've got to learn to accept all the different cultures, the different personalities that come into play here. or a team. So if we don't operate as a team, if we can't function as a team, it doesn't work. The second rule uh, primarily is, for most of our in-character interactions, is follow the city rules. Um, you know, don't do anything in the city that you couldn't really do in real life. Uh, that means stealing, murders, stuff like that. We are really try to make sure that our presence in the city, I Seely and O Seely, is positive. Oh, excellent, excellent rule, sir. Um, the third uh, rule, uh, this more pertains to some of our warlock stuff, is that uh, demons and or undead pets or anything that would, you know, again, just kind of cause chaos in the city is not allowed. All of our warlocks are really enforced in that rule, and we do have IC punishments and OC punishments if they continue. Wow, okay. And what are some of those punishments? Um, first punishment is that the character is given some demerits. If it goes to a second level, there's uh, IC punishments that would be uh, time spent in a cell for their character, where they're kind of cut off from being able to IC participate in events. And if it goes further than that, then the character themselves, IC can be fired from the Conclave. Now, this may not be the removal of the character OOC Lee, but that character would no longer be able to participate in guild events and is actually normally removed from the guild. Wow, okay. And speaking of out-of-character stuff, what are some of the out-of-character rules? The most important is OOC harassment. We really do cater to wanting to make everyone feel like they're at home here, that they're with friends. If someone starts taking stuff uh, too far in the OOC nature of like constant whispers, abusive language, abusive threats, anything like that is a step too far for us. And it's usually an immediate removal from the uh, guild as soon as we determine that that's going on. Okay. Well, I think that's that's very, very good because, you know, you don't want that kind of activity for not only people in your guild, but for those people that are around your guild as well to have to face harassment or anything like that. So I love that rule, sir. Our second uh, RPOC clause is there are no Archmages in the Conclave. Um, the Archmages, I see, they have to go through a huge, long, arduous process, and most mages spend their entire lives trying to become one. So to keep that unique title reserved for characters in the game that I have that lore standing, we've removed it from being available to characters in this guild. Um, well, sir, that's that's until Turnwinkle uh, joins the guild. Is that, that correct, sir? Um, sorry, Turnwinkle, there's equality for all in the Conclave. I can't make special privileges for you. Um, yeah, again, he, he will be an Archmage, sir, uh, when he's done with his adventures. So uh, I guess I'll be the only one in the guild. Um, again, some of our other OC rules in general just tend to be uh, be polite, uh, be courteous. We really do like if members have a problem with one another that they try to at least approach each other in a friendly manner first. Of course, if that doesn't is impossible, um, officers are always there for arbitrating or mediating, mediating discussions. We do have a handy-dandy rule book that is on the website that does highlight all of our IC and OOC rules. Okay, excellent. So, folks, if you want to find out all those rules once again and want to look those up, once again, those are on the Conclave website at conclave.shifter.com. And, you know, so, again, uh, there will be only one Archmage in the Conclave, and that'll be Turnwinkle when he's done. And so, excellent, excellent rules, folks. And so, folks, when we come back, we're going to talk about ranks. Again, we already know what Turnwinkle's rank will be, but we'll talk about what those other ranks, that, you know, normal folks have to work their way through, you know, when they join the guild. So with that, we'll come back and talk about the ranks in the Conclave. All righty. While we are away, we had two more people show up. Who do we have? This is Dula. She is one of our rangers. She has been with us off and on throughout our Draenor expansion and has recently returned to us since we came back to Stormwind. Oh, excellent. And next... This is Raylan Townsend. She is one of our frontline fighters and one of our blacksmiths. Uh, she is pretty tough with a shield, and she's pretty feisty redhead. Okay. <laughs> Excellent, aren't they all, ma'am? All right. <laughs> all righty. Go ahead and hop back in line, ladies. And so we are talking about ranks. And so, Chryson, who are we talking to?
I believe that would be me. Oh, excellent. And so, again, we already know that Turwinkle's the Archmage of the Guild. And, of course. Of course. And so, but for, you know, normal people joining the Guild, um, where do they start as far as ranks are concerned? Well, everyone starts at the rank of recruit. When you come on, you are, um, you are brought in. You are, you know, we have a member's handbook. We ask you to get to know people, you know, spend some time reading through things. You know, take your time, get to know things. Okay, excellent. And so how long do you, are people normally at the recruit rank? Well, that actually are, we have a dedicated rank system. The dedicated rank system is meant to basically reward people that participate in RP events. As an example, if you are a recruit, it usually takes attending three events, no matter their length or their nature, learning five people's names, one thing about each of those five people, and then interact in an RP testing so much with one of the officers. And then you can move to our next rank, which is initiate. Oh, okay. Awesome. I love all that entails to get to that next rank. Okay, so now you're an initiate. What happens there? As you participate, get to know people, establish yourself within the guild, you move throughout our rank system, which would be from recruit to initiate to ancillary to specialist to exemplar. Then leaving exemplar is the highest rank you can have in our guild without crossing over into a special rank we have in this guild called Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker has been a special rank held by those since the beginning of the formation of this guild when we were Conclave of Azora. Their entire job is to combat and mitigate cultists, magic users, an internal police force as well to monitor to make sure that no one goes too far, no one goes down that slippery slope. All right, and so what's the next rank? After that, once you get past Spellbreaker, then you're moving into Adjutant, which is our officer ranks. Ah, and how do you get to be an officer? A lot of commitment, <laughs> the ability to manage responsibility, dedication to the cause and to the conclave, the ability to work with others, and, you know, a nice level head. All right, excellent. And then last, uh, the guild leader spot, is that correct? Yes, the Conclave is a co-lead guild, and unfortunately, our current guild leader, Sam Miller, couldn't be with us this evening. He is called away on duty, unfortunately. He holds the uh, rank of Grand Marshal. The Grand Marshal is our wartime leader. When we are not at war or out on heavy campaign, the title of Chancellor, which is what I hold as Crescent, uh, is the guild leader. Oh, okay. And how do you get to be in either of those positions? Well, <laughs> you see all these people behind me? You have to get rid of them first. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right, there you go, folks. Some wonderful ranks and some great ways to promote or get promoted uh, in them. So excellent. I love everything that you have to do. And what it really does is add another layer of fun in the game where once you get done questing and doing all those other things pvp or raiding or whatnot you still have something that you can do with your character within the guild and work towards that next rank i love that so when we come back folks we are going to actually talk about some of those things the folks in the conclave do as far as guild events are concerned so we'll be right back with that Alrighty, folks, and we are back, and we are talking about guild events and the guild events that the Conclave participate in. And so we're talking to Stannis and Ollie. And so, guys, what are the guild events that you folks participate in? Great. So we have two kinds of, uh, of guild events, one of which is regularly scheduled organized plot, and the other which is mission boards, the difference which I'll slightly go over here and then defer to my friend Ollie to talk about our current plot line. Uh, so the mission board is essentially a system we created for members to engage in three, four, five person small man groups. And essentially what, what the goal is, is, is a GM creation tool. It's, just, it's a way for us to put out stories and talk to people about stories and not only get those small stories across and let people have small RP, more akin to D&D style kind of stuff, but also let new people try their hand at GMing. So more often than not, us plot 
officers or someone will post something to the mission board that's a little bit of a smaller end event only needs a couple less people maybe it's just not that big of a deal or at least it doesn't seem that way and we'll have the new person try to try their hand at gming with the help of us plot officers guiding them along the way helping them out giving them small groups to work with in order to get them um, experience in the world of gming uh, you can find our mission board postings at our website on conclave.shifter.com on the front page it's a cool way for not only people to log on every day and see oh is there something on the mission board but you know new people saying oh they're doing these small tasks i wonder what they're doing at large so the mission board is a good way for us to sort of supplement our our main plotline role play with smaller events that are both outside of our comfort milieu as much as as much as what we do like to do which is magical artifact hunting and cultist hunting and that kind of thing um obviously like most guilds we also have an organized plot our and this is good for people to know about us and our, our most active days for this plot are weekday evenings. So far, Mondays and Thursdays have been working out for a lot of people. So if you are available those days, then we'd probably be a good fit for you. But like most guilds, we do have an organized plot. Obviously, our, pl our plots circle around working within the vestiges of the Alliance to hunt down magical artifacts, recover artifacts, uh, recover our own in the line of duty. And I think you'll get a better idea of the kind of things we run if Ollie now explains what what event we started to engage in last night. So go ahead, Ollie. Um, thank you. Really, with our big plot, it tends to vary, sometimes week to week, sometimes month to month, sometimes more. And last night, what we started on was a event idea that I came up with, where we ended up going to a um, village in Tolbarad and investigate a strange curse that had come over the sailors there. It was the start of the event, it was largely, we had several members in injured towards the end by a Naga attack, but a large portion of it was our members trying to figure out what has been causing a influx of fog and moss to start covering the town. Villagers are disappearing, people are getting hurt, and all in all it's a decently eerie event that is definitely very nautical themed, but at the same time was sort of intended to be able to draw in people of different skill sets. Wow. That is awesome. I love the message board, and I certainly love the plot line you guys have going. That, that is great. And so you other guilds out there, what a fantastic idea, and hopefully see more of that going around, because that is wonderful. Uh, I love it. All right, folks, so when we come back, we're going to find out what these folks love about being in the guild. So we'll be right back with probably one of my favorite parts of the interview. That's the individual interviews of the folks within the Conclave. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks. Well, we are at my favorite part of the interview, and that's where we find out what folks enjoy about being in the guild they are in. And because, again, there's hundreds of guilds that they could have chose, but they're in this one. And so first up is Riley of the Conclave. He's a level 100 human warlock. And so, sir, again, love the transmog, sir. How long did this take to put together? The transmog, to get the armor, it took about three months because the shoulders refused to drop. And I didn't do anything else until I got the shoulders. And then the sword took literally one run. Oh, awesome. You love it when it happens like that, don't you? Yes, I, I was very happy. Alrighty, sir. What do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? I enjoy the mass support and friendliness of the Conclave. I've been in a lot of guilds, done a lot with different guilds, but the Conclave is the most friendly and open to everybody in anything I've ever seen on this video game. It is completely amazing and blew me away. Alright, sir. Well, that is an excellent answer. Thank you very much. Thank you for the chance. Alrighty, folks. Up we up next. We have Andy, or how do you pronounce the full name, ma'am? Uh, mostly, he just goes by Andy, but uh, and a sile. Okay, and a sile of the Conclave as a level one hundred night elf druid. And so, ma'am, again, love the staff. But what do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? Pretty much at any point of the night, if there's somebody on, you're going to find someone that will volunteer to role play, run old content, basically hang out talk, shoot the breeze, anything like that. Well, that's important, isn't it? Because why else be in a guild if nobody communicates with one another? You know, I've been in a lot of guilds where you're in there and there's 20 people in there, but no one says anything to you. And so you, you might as well be by yourself. Isn't that correct? Exactly. I mean, I've been in the same situation where I've been in other guilds in WoW, and it sometimes gets really clickish, but I've never seen that here. All right. Well, that is an excellent answer, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty, folks. Up next is Dreitzen, the Astral Walker. He's 
part of the Conclave. He's a level 100 human mage, and go mage, sir. I have to say the thing I probably enjoy the most about the guild is the overall spirit. I mean, it's a serious roleplay guild, but you still have people who don't take themselves too seriously. People are extremely helpful, not just to ourselves, but we help others as well, such as the uh, soup kitchens uh, that we will run every so often, where we hand out goodies to uh, lopies to help them start. Uh, that's pretty much what I like most about the guild, is just how friendly and helpful people are here. Oh, great. And boy, you know, you really wanted to get that out there. I hadn't even asked the question yet, and you already had the answer in mind, sir. And see, that's why our us mages are just that much better, because we already know the question before people even ask it, sir. So great answer. We are the master class. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much, sir. All right, folks. Up next, we have Sergeant Amrith of the Conclave as a level 100 Draenei warrior. And so, Amrith, what do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? As a recent member of the Conclave, uh, I've I've been playing plenty of games before World of Warcraft, and you can't really get that kind of sense of community uh, with a guild like this. I mean, I've been totally immersed since day one, and I've never had that kind of experience in other games on Moonguard or on my time on Wormrest as a whole. Um, I highly recommend it, and it's it's a blast to be here. All right, well, that is an excellent answer. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, folks, up next is Amelia of the Conclave, is a level 100 paladin. And so, ma'am, what do you enjoy about being in this guild? I think what I enjoy about it most would definitely be the amount of people that hang around and all the events that go onto the calendar. And not to mention, everyone is really nice, actually. And there's always someone to talk to. All right, that is excellent. Yeah, again, you want to be in a guild where you feel like you're part of a family or really close friends. And that really makes logging on a lot more enjoyable, doesn't it? It really does. Because if people have known me from previous, we've only, if I'm allowed to speak of this, we only had like maybe a few people on per night and it was just hard to. There's so few people, it was hard to talk to a lot of people. Right. And so having a good home with a bunch of friends just makes the game that much more enjoyable and your role play that much more vibrant. So excellent answer, ma'am. Thank you very much. And you're very welcome. All righty, folks. Up next is Lorana, the hallowed of the Conclave, is a level 68 Draenei priest. And so, ma'am, you are brand new to the guild. And so what made you choose the Conclave? Well... Actually, um, I had decided to bring back a really, really old RP character from the beginning of my RP days. And I really have this character close in my heart, so I really wanted to try to enjoy her again. So I was worried that RPing her from the beginning would not work. And in my original RP conquest, I came across one of the Conclave members. Her name is Amelia. And I really, I really hit it off with her. I, I clicked very well. She was extremely friendly, and she really gave me the confidence to properly get back into this character. And the result is that she is my main RP character now, and that I'm a member of this guild, and I love these guys so much. They're so much fun. All right, well, that is an excellent story and a wonderful answer, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thanks. Alrighty, folks. Up next is Peacekeeper Adele, the of the Conclave. He's a level one hundred worgen warrior. Did I pronounce that correctly, sir? Uh, I generally pronounce pronounce it Eddie L, but yeah, it, it's close enough. Okay, sir. And so, sir, what do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? Honestly, for me, it's got to be the people because more often than not, I've been around with MMOs for a while, and guilds they come and go, and people can get really flighty. And, like, I first started roleplay in a game called Aeon, where the standard power level for a roleplayer was a demigod. So, you could imagine how bad that could be for someone first learning how, because you start off as a high level. And I had that problem when I first joined here. Um, Adil, for instance, he could lift over a thousand pounds. And they were nice about it, but they told me yeah, that might be skirting it a bit. And they came along beside me and helped me make it a little bit more believable. And I can honestly say, if not for these people, I wouldn't have been able to create a character that I really enjoy and love to play and can really get into the stories with. The Conclave is a family of friends that I've got. 
and honestly, I wouldn't trade them for anything else. I'm very proud to be a, a part of this place, and I want to stay for as long as I can and for as long as they'd have me. Well, that is an excellent answer, sir. And, you know, again, getting into a group of people that are willing to help you out and shape, help you shape your, your RP is really sometimes an excellent find to find because when you're out there on your own, sometimes you come up with some crazy ideas. And if you don't have people to go, eh, you, maybe, you might not want to have the, you know, the invincible fur that, you know, no one can cut through a portion of your, your role play. So that is an excellent answer, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And for those that are concerned about it, I am living proof that they do help you make an excellent character when you need it. Well, there you go, folks. <laughs> excellent answer, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All righty, folks. Up next is Knight Halberk of the Conclave. He's a level 100 human paladin. And so, sir, what do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? I've been playing this game about 10 years. A lot of people in Conclave are 10-year veterans as well. And they're something pretty unique on a whole. The family atmosphere, which everybody else has mentioned, is, is really alive and well. As a relative new member, I find I'm welcome and encouraged to attend every event. And there's a lot of tolerance, too. We have set rules, but there's a lot of diversity in character background within reason, of course. Uh, Hallberg has some eccentricities and uh people encourage it tolerate it, and seem to enjoy it and uh, that's nice feedback to have so we have a pretty good bunch and everybody seems to get along really well at least my in my interpretation of things so awesome sauce okay <laughs> wonderful well thank you very much sir excellent answer cheers all righty folks up next is artisan raylan uh the, of the conclave a level 100 worgen warrior and so ma'am what do you enjoy about being in the Conclave? I have been in Conclave since its inception. Many people probably have known me as Olive A. I have bounced around on tune, but I always come back home. And that's what Conclave is. Conclave is home. The one thing that keeps drawing me back is the fact that the officers and the storytellers here always add a personal touch to your RP. They encourage character growth. They run personal plot lines. They'll take a piece of your history, whether it's a dream or a nightmare, and they'll make it real. It's got wonderful, immersive role play, huge support system, and that's what I've always thought of Conclave as. Conclave's home to me, and it always will be, no matter where I go or what tune I decide to play. All right, ma'am. Well, that is an excellent answer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Terwinkle, for doing all this for us. Oh, you bet. Anything for you, ma'am. All righty, folks. Up last, but certainly not least, are the guild leaders themselves. We have Chrysan and we have Filton here as well. And so, Chrysan, what do you enjoy about not only being in the Conclave, but helping to lead the guild, ma'am? I was there at the founding of Conclave when it was Conclave of Bazora. And Fielton here, his guild leader, Sam Miller, joined us a few months later. We have been here since the beginning, and we have met lifelong friends here. We have been through all the ups and downs, and we've done it together pretty much as a family. Conclave is very different than anything I have encountered out there in the WoW community, and we strive and fight to keep it what it is and what it always has been. And this is a great place, great drama, I see Lee, no drama, oh see Lee. And just a great place for friends to come and play the game together. Oh, excellent answer, ma'am. Uh, Filton, same question to you, sir. Well, I have to say mostly the same answer. Like like she said, I've, I've been in this guild what, almost three years now since they formed in like August and I joined in like November and it's been quite a ride over the years from joining, eventually becoming an officer once <laughs> I'd like figured my stuff out. And leading leading the guild is it's really just working with, with very close friends to make a great role playing experience for everyone in the guild. And it's it's quite enjoyable because we have a lot of great our peers. All right, well, excellent answer, you guys. And so, folks, when we come back, we are going to find out if we've missed anything during the interview. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, Chrysan, have we missed anything that you would like people to know about the Guild? 
Just a few things. First off, on top of being our own fully functioning guild, I wanted to send out a huge hug of appreciation pretty much and many thanks to our uh, fellow alliances. The Conclave has friends outside its own group and that is of the Osworn, House Hathon, and the Sapphire Crusade. They are our wonderful friends. We interact with them well, we attempt to interact with them on a daily basis, but we all have plots running all over the world. And they are a big part of us, and they're basically an extension of our wonderful community. All right, awesome. Uh, you know, again, I really like that when a guild just isn't, you know, just centered around itself, but also incorporates other guilds within their community. And it just makes the community that much bigger and better. So, excellent. And anything you'd like to shout out to the community, ma'am? Since our IC return to Stormwind, the Conclave has started to make its presence known here and there, and we um, take our time out to get to know guilds we've never had a chance to meet before, and we've encountered some very tense, very wonderful, very interesting, and full of intrigue sorts of roleplay since our return, and we also wanted to just say thank you to the community for taking the time to meet with us, and it's an adventure, and we hope we have lots more interaction to come with them. All right, folks, so if you are looking for a home and you haven't found a guild yet, might I suggest the Conclave? A lot of fun, a close-knit group, but it also incorporates not only role play within their own circles, but other guilds as well. And I think you will be really hard-pressed to find a better guild. And so the Conclave, a wonderful guild to come and join. So with that, folks, we are going to come back and say goodbye to this wonderful, wonderful guild. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks. Well, we are back. And boy, Kryson, thank you so much for taking the time and patience to answer all of Turwinkle's pestering questions tonight, ma'am. Thank you so much for having us. You bet. And so, folks, again, if you're looking for a great home, come and try out the Conclave, a fun, fun guild here on Warm Rest Accord. And so with that, we are going to hurt Turwinkle back to Fuse Light by the Sea for our final thoughts on this wonderful guild, the Conclave. Oh, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy smokes. Little fireworks show. At, at the... Oh, um, guys, guys, don't leave. Me. Guys, don't leave me here. Guys. Hello. Um, guys. Alrighty, folks. Well, we made it safe and sound back by Fuse Light by the Sea. And boy, Terwinkle, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Indubitably. You bet. So let's give the Conclave Guild a great big thank you, sir. Allow me to express my deepest thanks. You bet. And so, folks, if you like this episode, click that like button. If you would like to comment on this episode or on any of our previous episodes, please do so below. Let us know what you liked and what you didn't. And finally, if you'd like to subscribe, well, we would love to have you. So just hit that subscription button today. Well, excellent job as always, Turwinkle. And Turwinkle, we will see you next time. It's been fun. It has been fun. Bye-bye.